All right, today we're going to be talking about the 2024 AP Computer Science free response question number 1A. So this one is, we are going to be writing this method simulate one day. And I'm going to go over the problem statement right now, but you can go ahead and skip to where I start talking about the solution if you have already read it, for example. This problem says, write the simulate one day method, which simulates numb birds, birds, or possibly a bear at the feeder for one day. The method determines the amount of food taken from the feeder on this day and updates the current food instance variable. So that's defined here and it's private int. The simulation accounts for normal conditions, which occur 95% of the time, and abnormal conditions, which occur 5% of the time. Under normal conditions, the simulation assumes that on any given day, only birds visit the feeder and that each bird at the feeder consumes the same amount of food. So that's this parameter that's being passed in, num birds. This standard amount consumed is between 10 and 50 grams of food inclusive in one gram increments. That is, on any given day, each bird might eat 10, 11, up to 49 or 50 grams of food. The amount of food eaten by each bird on a given day is randomly generated. Each integer from 10 to 50 inclusive has an equal chance of being chosen. So I think inclusive there, we should be, you know, underlining that, um, taking that into account, and also the fact that this is randomly generated and has an equal chance of being chosen. For example, a run of the simulation might predict that for a certain day under normal conditions, each bird coming to the feeder will eat 11 grams of food. So also, each bird is eating the same number of randomly generated food. If 10 birds come to the feeder on that day, then the total of 110 grams of food will be consumed. So we're just multiplying those two values. If the simulated food consumed is greater than the amount of food in the feeder, the birds empty the feeder and the amount of food in the feeder at the end of the day is zero. So this int should never be dipping below zero what that is basically saying. Under abnormal conditions, a bear empties the feeder and the amount of food in the feeder at the end of the day is zero. Let's go ahead and jump into some pseudocode. I feel like this helps me to try to understand where I'm going with this problem. It seems like the first thing that we need to figure out if we are dealing with what we are calling normal conditions, so that's a bird is coming, or abnormal conditions, so that's a bear is coming. So figure out if the day has normal or abnormal conditions. So as a little key here, 95% of the time, this means we have normal conditions, and then 5% of the time is abnormal, okay? So most of the time we're having birds come to this feeder. Then let's take it piecewise. So let's assume that if we have normal conditions, there's some sort of logic that we were going to want to apply to the feeder uh, instance variable current food to change how much food the birds are eating. Okay, so if normal conditions, so if it's that 95% of the time, we want to find which random amount of food each bird eats. And this is from 10 to 50 inclusive. Okay, so 50 is included. 10 and 50 are included. What's next? So once we have that random amount of food, we want to actually remove that number of food per bird from current food. So we want to consume the food, okay? And then you might think that we're done here, but let's say that the number of birds times the random amount of food that each of the bird eats is actually greater than how much food we had left. We're going to end up with a negative value for current food. So we are going to have to have a special case where we check to make sure that we're not below zero. And if we are, set that number to be zero. Okay, so if simulated food consumed is greater than amount of food in the feed, set amount of the food in the feeder to zero. Cool. And that should wrap up uh, everything we need to do if we have normal conditions. So you can imagine that if we don't have normal conditions, then we have abnormal conditions. Else if abnormal conditions, this means that a bear has come to our feeder. And unfortunately, what that means for us is that the bear ate all the food. The bear is super hungry. If we have abnormal conditions, we had a bear and we're just going to empty the feeder. And so since this is a void method, we're not actually returning anything. We're just modifying this internal state. So we don't need to return anything. So that should wrap it up for our pseudocode. So now let's go ahead and actually jump into our code. So 
the first thing we need to do is actually figure out if the day has normal or abnormal conditions. Every time you're, you're hearing like percentages and like probability, your brain should immediately be going to math.random. And luckily for you, you don't have to memorize exactly what math.random does. It might be nice to, you know, familiarize yourself with it, but you can check out that Java cheat sheet that comes with the AB test. And what it says is that math.random will return a double value that is greater than 0.0, .0 and less than 1.0. So you might notice that it's not actually inclusive at the higher end. It will not ever give you 1.0 as a value. So if we want to use math.random, we're going to want to first call it. So double condition of day equals math.random. Okay, and so this should be giving us a value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 exclusive. Exclusive. Um, so it will never reach 1.0. So what this means is to figure out if 95% of the time it's normal, if normal conditions, so if condition of day, so which values are we including in this? 0, 0.0 through 0 0.94. This will be 95% of the time, and the other 5% of the time will be 0 0.95 through, you know, 1.0 exclusive. Okay? So if condition of the day is less than 0 0.95, that's that first case, then we've had a normal day. We've had birds visit our feeder. So we need to now, once again, figure out a random number. So this one is find which random amount of food each bird eats from 10 to 50 inclusive. Yeah, change that a little bit. Okay, we can't really use math.random by itself now. We will have to modify it a little bit, okay? So anytime you need to change the starting value of math.random and also the range such that it doesn't look like 0, 0.0 through 1.0, you can use this little formula here. I think we should start with the beginning number changing first because that makes it a little bit more intuitive to understand what we want the max to be, okay? So let's say we're gonna call math.random, okay? Uh, we're gonna be multiplying by something. We don't quite know what that is yet. We want to change our beginning value of the range. So the beginning value should now be 10, instead of 0, 0.0. You'll also notice that this is going to be an int rather than a double, so we're gonna be casting it at some point. And so if we cast int of math.random, this will just become a zero, so zero. What do we need to add to zero to make it 10, which is the new lower bound of our range? We need to add 10, okay? So now the lower bound of our range is 10. Um, and so now we need to figure out what we want to multiply our math.random by such that our upper bound is 50. Okay, so you might be tempted to just multiply this by 50, but then let's think about what this is doing. So if our starting range is 10 and the maximum value we can get from math.random is 50, if we do this, we're changing our range to be 10 through 60 exclusive. And that's not the range that we want, right? So we take our math.random times 50. So now this number here becomes 50. We cast it to an int. So it's 50 exclusive. And then we add a 10. So it's going to be 60 as our upper range. Okay. So we want to have 50 as our lower range, as our higher range inclusive. So what this means is you might also be tempted to say times 40. This is going to be do a similar thing where you have between 0 and 40 as our um, initial range, exclusive on the higher end. Then we add 10, it's going to be 0 to 50, but still exclusive. So we want to include that 50. So we're going to need to add one more to our number. So now we have 10 to 51 exclusive, which is the same thing as 10 to 50 inclusive. Okay, now that we've figured out the math there, we can say, we can store this in a variable so that we will later on use it in our logic. So let's say int num food eaten equals this cast of math.random times 41 plus 
And next thing we're going to do is remove that number of food per bird from current food. So what this looks like is um, we know current food is this instance variable. So we're going to say current food minus equals um, num food eaten. And then remember, we have this parameter being passed into this method, num birds. So each bird is going to eat the same number of food, which is num food eaten. Um, so I'm using minus equals here. You could also set this. You could also write it this way. Current food equals current food minus. And then you're probably going to want to put this in parentheses to make sure that this gets done first. Current food minus num food eaten times num birds. That's the same thing. But, uh, you know, I prefer a little more concise. Then, we're not quite done yet here, if simulated food consumed is greater than amount of food in the feed, set amount of food in the feeder to zero. So at this point, current food can be negative, and that's not a valid state that we want our feeder to have. So we're going to just add a little if check. So if current food is less than zero, set current food equal to zero. And that should wrap it up for our normal condition checks. So if the condition of the day was less than 0 0.25, 0 0.95, we had normal conditions. Otherwise, we can just put an else here. This is going to encompass the rest of this range, 0 0.95 to 1 exclusive on this end. Otherwise, we had abnormal conditions. We had a bear come to our feeder, and we're going to empty our feeder. So what this looks like is we're just going to set our current food equal to 0. And that should be it for our code for simulate one day. Um, as I always recommend, please do not walk away from writing up the code without testing it. They typically give you a few uh, test calls to make sure that your code works as expected. So with this one, it's a little bit, you can't totally test it. They had to like fake it a little bit because we're using random values. Um, but let's just go ahead and run through those three examples. So the first one says that current food, the feeder initially contains 500 grams of food. Cool. And then we simulate one day with 12 birds. Okay. And we're assuming that whatever was the condition of the day is going to be normal for this. So birds are going to be coming. So, uh, and then we're going to say that the number of food eaten was 20 grams. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to set current food. So 500, we're going to change that current food minus equals Num food eaten would be 20 times number of birds would be 12. So that is going to be 240. So we're going to set current food equal to 50 minus 240. That's now going to be equal to 260 grams. 260 grams is not less than zero. So we're not going to set current food equal to zero. And then we're not going to go into that else statement. So that would be the end of the simulate one day call. And that matches up with what we expected. Next example says that there, if there is 1,000 grams of food and we call simulate one day with, say, 22 birds, and in this case, the condition of the day was abnormal. A bear came around to our feeder. Very sad. What this did was it left zero grams of food in the feeder. So we go into our else statement. We set current food equal to zero. So now we have zero grams of food, and that matches up with the expectation from the example. The last example says the feeder initially contains 100 grams of food, and we call simulate one day with five birds. Um, and we're going to say that this is a normal day. We're going to have the birds actually eat food. Um, and we're going to say that the random number that we got generated is 30 grams of food. Then we're going to set our current food minus equals to num food eaten, which is 30 times number of birds, which is five. That's um, current food minus equals 150, we actually only have 100 grams of food. So this is going to end up making our number of grams of food to be negative 50. But remember what I said, we can never have negative food in our feeder. That doesn't really make sense from my feeder perspective. So we're going to actually go into this if check because minus 50 is less than zero. And then we're going to set our current food equal to zero. So now we have zero grams of food in our feeder. Uh, we don't go into the else statement and that finishes our simulate one day method call. And zero grams is what we expected to have in the feeder after that call. So hopefully this helps you out with this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.